Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. Today we're doing a replay review for Wacky Wombat. He uh, became a patron on Patreon recently and sent me this replay uh, to review. So let's check it out. Wacky Wombat, he's Cybran. This is a 3 versus 3 game on Twin River, so very <laughs> classic, classic map, classic 3 versus 3 on this map, uh, so he's in the front left, we have an air player at the back, we have side player, everyone very similar ratings except uh, a less of look is a little bit higher, 1500. The rest of the guys, 1k, 1100, and wacky is 1200. So, let's take a look at the opening. So, he's going second land, which is fine. You can go second land, you can definitely go second air on this map. I would be inclined to go second air, probably, in this scenario because. Um, the main contested map control is on the sides, in the corners. And uh, you're not going to contest that with land, obviously. They are separated by the twin <laughs> rivers, of course. So I would be inclined to go for air and attempt to secure the island next to me. The air player at the back, his main role at the beginning of the game is to get one of the islands one of the expansions in the in the corners and I think the front players need to also help with that so that will be the strategic concern immediately on twin rivers will be getting the sides so we have a definitely not the best build order here basically well let's see what do we have Okay, we have two labs. We have a scout, which is not with the labs, which is not great. We have, uh, well, we're lacking one of our mixes. And uh, we're stalling power, of course. So, yeah, you can't assist the commander and build a second factory uh, with only five pgens on Twin Rivers. You should have more. I mean, obviously, in 1v1, you're going to have way a lot more pgens. Because you're going to get all of the expansions. But even in a team game. You need more than 5 pigeons to assist your commander basically. Unless you have actual tree reclaim. Not single trees like we have here. And he's not grabbing single trees anyway it seems. Well, well he probably will a little bit here. So a little bit lazy on the reclaim. On this side. And this guy should be taking a mechs. Not be attack moving for sure. And, yeah, we just need an extra P-Gen, maybe two extra P-Gen. Probably just one extra P-Gen and we might be able to assist. ACU should leave the base quickly on this map in a team game. And the labs, I would I would be sending a lab to the middle probably. Actually, uh, on Twin Rivers, I think what you do normally, or well, I think one of the best scenarios is uh, one player sends the Engineer. And the other player sends the tank to middle and you try and secure the reclaim that way. Maybe the guy sends an engineer, sends a follow-up tank slightly later. But uh, yeah, if you work together, you can both get the reclaim. And uh, basically, the guy who takes the reclaim can send it to the other guys as well. Send some of it to the other guys. And you don't have to invest in an ACU. This guy sends his, his ACU to the middle, which is just fine, which actually... It's fine. I would probably attack this area with labs, so. But sending them here is basically the next best option, so it's fine. Not having a scout with them is a bit sad, but that's, you know, you can't have everything. So we're going for a third factory. We're not going for eco. I might be inclined to go for a quick max on a map like this. Okay, there's two tanks forward. Very quick tanks from the green player, which means his expansion is not going to be good and his... He's not defended in his in his uh, corner, so this is actually working well. Now one of our labs is out of range, so 
That's just a small micro issue. But yeah, these need to both be shooting for sure. Now we're heading forward. A bad fight happens, but you actually escape with the tank, so decent reactions. Although it is on very low HP. But yeah, I gotta watch for those two versus one engagements. Even in that one, it's a there's also Celine firing, so not. Yeah, you want you want to be careful. You knew there was two tanks there, so you can't be can't be sending a single tank into that engagement. And the labs didn't finish the mechs, and they're now quite idle. We could run into the. See, there's damage to be done here. I mean, actually. See, this is where the, the land scout comes in. I mean, if you had the land scout, you would know exactly where to go. You'd be able to see up here. You'd see engineers. Not only would it just give you intel, it would also just... Uh, it makes it so much easier. You can just... Uh, it sort of pops out at you when you zoom out that you still have units here. You can see things moving around over here. You won't forget about them as easily also if you have a, a land scout with these guys and you'd be able to avoid tanks, avoid ACUs, and find good kills. And if you're going to invest in two labs really early on, I would definitely encourage you to make a scout because you're not going for air early on, so you're not going to have an air scout to help you out. If you had an air scout to help you out, that would be a different story. That would be something, but you, you a land scout is, is the way to go. So yeah, we're making a mix, which I like. You definitely want to make eco start early on your eco on this map. As of course, there's not too much to fight for, except for the islands, which I will note your team has not gone for yet. Also, this guy has no air whatsoever, so it's going to be tricky. Uh, so you're making air factory, which is good. You definitely need to make, I think it's good to make one. And here we take a bad fight. So look, this is just very simple. It's, you know, five Thams and a Selene versus four Mantis. So we're going to lose the fight. Now he ends up retreating. But, um, yeah, you'll get the reclaim. And then he comes back and takes actually a bad engagement. Yeah, so we're getting outnumbered and you're just kind of moving into engagements where you're outnumbered, which is very inefficient. You're not going to kill any Thams now, I think. Uh, yeah, so now he walks away with four damaged Thams. Oh, he can't see the... <laughs> he can't see the, the mole. That's... It's at least funny. Okay, your air player is going for the top side, but there's already units here. He's scouting just ahead, so he should already know at this point that it's not going to work no scouting on this side so the islands look quite bad and our engagements basically versus our opponent have been have been bad we've had less tanks and you've continued fighting and uh, that's very damaging you're just gonna fall behind in units that way now you only have four tanks I mean he, your opponent definitely has probably twice as many now yeah he has nine tanks he has an anti-air and he has artillery so that's mainly from bad engagements okay no more eco more eco needs to be started i think mm, might be time to forego additional factories because if you look at it if you look at your opponent you should have more tanks but because of the bad engagements you have less he has as you can see i mean you have like the same eco but he only has two t two factories in his main base. He has no air factory. He has a factory over here, which it looks like he simply edge built. And so he's he should be weak here, but because he took bad engagements, you don't actually have a unit advantage. Um, and now you're faced with a very scary prospect of multiple ACUs. So you can see how important it is to have air now your air is a little bit late so you if your teammate hadn't been scouting for you you might have been trapped between two commanders and you may have just lost the game immediately now this is a very nice fight that you get 
which is uh, heading back towards his units. At this point, you should move into his units as much as possible. To keep them in range as long as possible. But you got three free kills there, which is quite nice. Nothing wrong with that. You probably should not have walked so far away, though, because your your teammate was walking into the commanders and you were walking away. So this is... Uh, you could have uh, you could have allowed your teammate to do suicide there. Somehow your labs are still alive, that makes no sense whatsoever, but uh, fair enough. They've literally been standing in the one place for several minutes now. I'm f I, I actually forgot they were even there. I just assumed they were dead, basically. Now they are. Not a bad bomber, but... Yeah, not a bad bomber, but we are down both islands. So, like, from just a map control position you are in a losing position right now if the game continues that you shouldn't be able to win versus this much additional map control for your your opponent so you gotta make something happen so either you have to have a plan to drop and take an island back with uh i don't know maybe multiple transports dropping units Maybe T2 Air attacking this island in conjunction with that. Maybe I mean, a commander drop even. Or something. Or you have to make something happen in the in the middle of the park. So uh, Either way, things have to change for this game to, to uh, look better. Now you've added a lot of T1 factories. I don't... I wouldn't really recommend it, honestly, on this map. I would focus more on economy... But maybe in this scenario, you feel like, you know, if you're going to make something happen on the land, you're going to need uh, more factories. But the problem is if uh, somebody gets T2 and they start making PDs, you're basically going to need T2 land of your own to uh, take out the PDs with, you know, MMLs. Or you're going to need tons of Medusa, and that's, that's probably going to be inefficient in conjunction with a gun comp. So that's why, you know, investing in factories, probably not a great idea. Making six land factories, I'd probably, I'd make less, focus on mexes and then heading to T2 land more quickly because not only do you need to take out PDs, most likely, as it is Twin Rivers, <laughs> or, or you'll, you know, you'll need flak, you'll need T2 engineers for TMD. So I would be aiming more towards T2 land than uh, T1 spam. Unless you're just going to go big, big T1 spam, gun calm, and just, you know, attack, attack, attack. But in this case, you're sort of in between two, two options. So you have quite a decent bit of T1 land production. You have some eco, but it doesn't look like you can actually push through and do huge damage or win the game so it's sort of an in-between and I don't I don't think you want to be in between too much so here we have free mechs we have some reclaim around us our economy balance is fine we have some overflow as well we actually we do need more pigeons because we're going to be aiming to get a uh an upgrade, an AC upgrade. You always are aiming to get an AC upgrade basically on Twin Rivers or in most team games. The AC is very powerful and uh, needs to be upgraded because you can't afford to, you know, take that time and you will get the value out of the AC upgrades generally in a team game scenario. Okay, here we go. We are under attack by four. Four gunships. Now, I think you can dodge these. At least partially. They all seem to be firing in th at the same time, so that might be helpful as well. Just need to circle at the right time. There's a nice bit. Of, you took a nice fight. There's a decent bit of reclaim here. But this... Uh, These gunships are very dangerous. Now you do have some inties and your teammate has a few as well, but it's really not that many, so you're 
It seems like you're unlikely to die, but this is quite scary, and maybe you you do need to dodge, I think. Or at least, if you're not dodging, I definitely would not be reclaiming right now. This is a, this is the exact wrong time to reclaim. You need to give, you need to make anti-air here, uh, if only to force the gunships to attack something else than your commander, because you're you're extremely low now, under 4k HP. Like this is very, very dangerous. Like reclaiming is 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 not the right move. Also, you're not going to make it to the water. That's why I would say make uh, anti-air. Now you do survive. Just over 2,000 HP. Here you seem like you're going to try and run past. Then you run back. Yeah, so this is not great here. So you can see some units come in. You don't have intel ahead of you, so. It's good that you didn't send the units all the way in because you that would have been it would have they would have for sure gotten clean up because if you think about it he has gunships so he can just send another gunship here and start cleaning up all your mantis and he had units headed that way to defend so it's good that you didn't send them in however uh, you did stand in range of a commander for a long time and now you ping to attack and this is not the right move I mean you have nine mantis, you know. Teammate has, you know, maybe the same number of thams, maybe twelve ma thams, maybe slightly more than you. Overall, not it's not gonna happen for you. You 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 can't kill this commander, and you shouldn't try because of that. So definitely, a bit of a waste of units. Also, no, you know, you made one ping. That's n often not enough to coordinate with a teammate. And then we're also sending bombers after the commander. So this is a bit... This is just basically... Small... Uh, well, just, you know... You got a bit overexcited there. You thought you could actually get a kill, but... You are very, very far from a getting a kill here. So this is just a... You misread the, the situation there. And yeah, you can blame your teammate. Your teammate didn't go in after the commander or something. But even if your teammate did, I don't think it happens. I, I think your teammate actually did the right thing by by retreating. And a few T1 bombers are not going to provide that much help against the commander either. So. so now you're making T2 in the water. That is a... Correct decision, I would say. Now, you, there's definitely an argument to be made for stealth first. If you make stealth, I mean, it's, you know, definitely going to slow you down a lot on your way to T2, but it's going to protect you perfectly against torpedo bombers, as uh, they won't be able to spot you with their sonar. Neither will air scouts or that. So that's good. And uh, what else is going on? We've added even more T1 production. Again, I don't, I don't agree with this. As I said before, definitely aim more for T2 land because, I mean, if you look at it now, you have a lot of things that are very vulnerable that you can't protect because you have no Tech 2. Teammate has a similar problem, no Tech 2. He could get TML from the island. He, I mean, even your, your air player has no T2, which is very, very bad at 10 minutes on the... On Twin Rivers, no T2 air, no T2 at all on this team, no T2 on the commander either. This guy's making something. He's probably making. Wait, is that a backup? Oh, he already has the gun, and he's making probably nano or something. But uh, yeah, aim for T2 land. Don't don't keep adding T1 factories. At some point, you gotta think very carefully about how much this is gonna net you. Because if you look at it, you're minus 30 mass. This is delaying your T2. Uh, commander hugely this factory is idle and you're still stalling this factory you I mean you can't actually use all these factories basically so you could have you know this you could have another t2 max and you could have t2 land probably already instead of three or four of these factories and the, the extra t1 land is not capable of taking on what your opponents have You can see how the T1 land investment can be wasted. 
by basically intervention from your opponent's teammates. So if your opponent's teammates help out the, your opponent, then uh, your T1 land is no longer enough to actually break through, and then you're left with a lot of wasted, uh, wasted mass into units that can't actually do what they're supposed to be able to do. Now, like if your if your opponent had no help, it's possible that you could overrun him, right? But a few gunships, and suddenly you're in the water. All this T1 land is not very useful anymore, and a lot of this investment is not paying off. So okay, you react to I like how you react to the the mass doll in terms of well you you come off the T T2 max is basically the main the main way you do it. But uh, maybe you could recycle this factory would be one option instead of that. Maybe try to finish the T2 Max, recycle a factory, or even two factories, and uh, get the get the PJ, get the get the T2 on your commander. This guy is very nearly dead. I guess you said dodge. He's probably dying to um, Lobos then. If I had to guess, he's very low. Okay, I would also, one thing, uh, I would definitely have a mechs, or sorry, a, a radar over here somewhere. So, if you have a radar over here, then uh, you'll have a good chance of spotting drops in time to at least get bombers in position, as you have some bombers here. Or even for your, your air to shoot it down, if you have any. Also, having your air park right here. Is a very is the perfect place because I mean the drops aren't going to come from anywhere else. If they come from the bottom side, that's not your problem. If they come from the top side, you can have your air parked right here and uh, just uh, have them in the right position to shoot it down already. <clears throat> so now we have a bit more mass. We should definitely be yeah. T two land seems like a, a logical time to do it. Also start this mechs upgrading as well and get some assistance on it all these guys yeah they're they don't need to reclaim trees it's not very useful i'd be making this into a t2 max here and i'd also be building an energy storage because well it's very useful we're, okay we're making some okay i would not recommend building here basically because if you look at it you can't do anything about some artillery that's like back here it's you can't do anything about it. I mean, you unless you can push forward, but in that case, your ACU is just out of position down here on the bottom, where he can't really build stuff unless he walks closer. And then, if you want to get in here, you're gonna have to walk around a little bit. So yeah, don't build down here because on the bottom of cliffs, artillery can shoot down, and you can't shoot back up. I would not recommend that. Also, going straight for TML here. Although TML is great and can do a lot of damage, it's very expensive. And if you are stalling heavily before it's even completed, then the, the missiles are going to take a very long time to build. So you should you should reclaim this right now. And move on. Now, you're probably going to leave this behind. If you look at this, I mean, right, it would cost 850 if you finished it. You're about almost a third of the way through, so... There's like 200 mass there, basically, that you've just put into a building and then walked away from. So that's definitely uh, something you don't want to do. But hey, here comes the T1 land actually making things happen. So this guy is T2. He's got multiple PDs and now he's shooting. Looks like he's maybe reclaiming some units manually. He should be building stuff. If he's building stuff, this would be fine. He's sort of just standing there doing nothing. And you're walking forward now. Alright. So that went extremely well. Yeah, actually, the Medusa are, are really good with the with the stunning. And you had a, just enough Mantis to actually kill his position. So the next step is um, getting your own PDs down. 
Let's see. Yes, we're not upgrading any mechs at the minute. But we do have T2 land. Now I'm interested to know what you're going to build. I mean, the first thing you should build is T2NG, obviously. But, uh... Oh, one sec. Apologies. Right, so... First thing we need is a radar, I guess. Oh, there's a second commander here. You just got overcharged. So this actually... Yeah, they still have two commanders on this side. Uh, this guy never sent his commander forward, which is a big mistake on Twin Rivers, actually, by the way. The air player should uh, walk forward. I mean, at a certain point, he doesn't need to be there anymore. Or he needs, you know, multiple upgrades to hang around. But certainly, he should be at the front. There's no reason not to be. So, yeah, this is actually makes this attack look a lot worse. This attack shouldn't really work now. Although you, you, you know kill his PDs and stuff he should simply just retreat slightly start building PDs again down here and uh, with the support of his other of his teammate then he should like he should be able to hold on to this and then take the whole reclaim field so this is what you're fighting for is the reclaim field so what you should do is stop walking around and start building PDs that's that's your main weapon is the T2 PDs that you're gonna build with this T2 commander and the sooner you start building them, the better. Also, the sooner you get these uh, engineers forward and reclaiming, the better as well. So, see all these guys. Just give them move order to the closest part of the reclaim field. Attack move forward and you should be good. So, you're building PDs now. Building a T1 PD. And here, when you're building with the commander, I guess in between, if you're stalling, you can sort of just grab a few wrecks and then go back to building PDs. But yeah, there's a ton of reclaim and we're too slow taking it. So, there, you know, these gunships have been here forever. They're the main reclaim. That's been here for a long time. But uh, obviously it's quite hectic. So it's a lot to focus on. But uh, we have one PD up now. We're going to need more. Our teammates sent in some T1 tanks, which really the, these guys are overreacting to. It's just some T1 tanks. He doesn't really need to retreat very much. He's going to be on a lot of HP still. And now because we don't have radar, we lose our PD. And we're still not building anymore. This is another time when... The, the additional factories at the back are kind of hurting you. Because you have T1 land. Too much T1 land production, which you can't afford. You have T2 land production. You're making hoplites. And, yeah, we just simply don't have a, enough mass for everything. Oh, hang on. That's a T3 mech, and that might be an accident. I'm going to assume that's an accident, actually. But, yes, there's a lot of walking around by these commanders, which really should be building. Which is the, this is the main thing that I see that's totally wrong in this game. You're walking around a lot. I mean, you have no mass. But, really... This commander should not be walking around. If you wanted to walk around, you should have made a, a gun, basically. T2, yes, will give you back some HP and you're low, but, you know, if you make it, you, you gotta be building, otherwise it's sort of a waste. And same for the other guy. I mean, he should be... He should have many PDs. He could have multiple extra right now. But he doesn't because he's, you know, walking around and stuff. All you need to do, build build PDs for the next three minutes and don't don't really stop making them except to get a bit of reclaim and then secure this field for, for your engineers and then at that point, who knows, you might need to retreat because you are very far forward or maybe you can just push through once you use the reclaim and turn it into good units. If you're going to continue making the, the T1 though, you need to find a, a good avenue of attack for it. For example, getting a T2 transport off your off your teammate and dropping those tanks onto this island. That would be probably one of the best ways to use a lot of these T1 tanks that you have. 
in my opinion. I mean, if you look here, like one T2 transport of units could, probably should wipe out this whole island. There's there's like some artillery. That's that's all. There's actually no tanks there. So that would be a great a great way to use these units, and then maybe just recycle the factories at the front that have no adjacency. This one at the front is nice for engineers, though. This one is this one is very useful. These ones, uh, yeah, you know, bit of extra mass is what they look like to me. Now you're making a lot of hoplites. I would be making a few vipers early on because again, everyone should be, well. The guys with T2, for example, your opponent should be making T2 BDs. Therefore, you need vipers. That is uh, the Cybern MML to take those out. Your air player finally arrived at the front at like 17 minutes, but he has no upgrades. So he's not very useful. If he had double gun... Wait, maybe he does have range gun actually by the... Does he? Yeah, he has range gun. He has range gun and sensors. That's at least useful. But in the meantime, actually, this guy has gotten all the upgrades he's looking for. He had T2, now he has gun and nano. Now, that's a really strong commander here. I actually missed when he got those upgrades. Yeah, this this guy has a death wish if he wants to keep, like he's walking into range. This guy's walking away, it makes no sense. But uh, yeah, you're gonna need a lot of PDs. A lot of PDs to stop this guy. That's that's all you need, though. Thankfully, just a lot of PDs, and I would say you know, less mantis, more Medusa, and just sort of try and hold this position. Might be the way to go. Because there's still a lot of reclaim here. Let's see how much is there. I mean, on screen there's like nine and a half k. That's some of this stuff down here. Just here, there's like five k. So yeah, it's quite significant. T3 max worth mass and um, <laughs> we are still making a t3 max it's actually almost finished what worries me is there's no storage is queued up but yes in this scenario uh, I would never I would not stop building t2 BDs also a single shield and maybe upgrade it once or twice as cyber you definitely gonna need that okay we're getting some anti here that's good out but yeah PDs, 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 because this guy, as you can see by his back, he's upgraded, all his arms are buff AF, and uh, that means he has three upgrades on him, so, and you can see by the HP, and his health is growing rapidly, or being regained rapidly, he has nano, he has T2, you know that already, and he has gun, you can see that quite clearly, so, yes. T2PDs are the answer. T2PDs, shields. And uh, you should be able to hold them off for a while, at least. So we're just pushing in, attacking heavily. Sending all of our units in. And you kill the T2P gen, which is good. Is it that good, though? Really? I mean, if we look, we just move to the right a bit so we don't catch all the reclaim in the other position. Like, just here... 3,700 mass. Is it worth leaving that much mass on his doorstep to kill a T2P gen? I would say that's a no. Now, if you killed the TMD and your TML was loaded, right, you have two TMLs, then uh, for sure it could turn into something very worth it. This, PD ne this uh, TMD needs to die, though. And we need to keep building more PDs. So that's good. You're building another one. Oh. Mercies. Not enough mercies to kill him though. Three and a half thousand. That is the classic. Uh, attack that just comes a bit too early. Now sending some T1 units after the commander. You're not going to kill this, this guy. Even though he looks like he's low HP. You're actually going to probably just give him veterancy, maybe waste some extra units. You're not going to get a kill, basically, because there's also PDs back here. So, yeah, you are, at this point, I mean, right, this this T3 max is great. 
if it had storage it would be it would be really good you probably are the first player with the t3 max okay our player has t3 air he doesn't have a pigeon started but yeah you are against two players at this point <laughs> and you don't have an island so yeah it's obviously a very tough position to be in but the TMLs are flying and this this is a really good TML now I thought it was probably might have been a mistake to make it because you need more PDs but it's definitely gonna pay off here I mean this guy invested into four T2 maxes with no defenses whatsoever and you've killed it you're gonna kill all of them at TML well I assume you are you've already killed three out of four but yeah no no storage on a T3 max is quite uh, quite painful you still need more PDs that's for sure also a shield always always invest in a shield in a, in a firebase fire the shield is the biggest force multiplier in a firebase by far I mean it's the force multiplier I guess you have to have one you also need to make uh, another PJ most likely you have not very much H not very much uh, power another PJ is going to be required rhinos are not going to do very much here either by the way okay we're recycling factories uh yeah rhinos not the way to go again vipers do not uh i mean vipers are very very good units this like all of this should be dead already honestly vipers are very strong that's a lot of t2 artillery i wonder how far that reaches it doesn't actually reach you which is nice uh, but yes, don't make rhinos here, make vipers. If you're going to make rhinos, I would drop them to the island. You can still take this island back at any point. It should it should always be on your mind that this, this needs to be retaken. It should be one of the steps on the way to victory. Unless you have a very specific plan otherwise that you're following. Then this, this taking this back should be in your mind. Okay. You still haven't realized about this. And you have quite a bit of mass now. Not enough uh, engineers in the base as well. That's another thing. By the way, you should have like twice as many engineers at least in the base. Then you could actually spend this mass. So you can solve it a bit more quickly by, you know, making engineers out of these factories. Maybe control king those factories was actually at the wrong time. As you you didn't control k them when you're stalling sort of thing and then you control k them when you actually needed needed build power this tml has done amazing though that's that's for sure N okay what killed the shield probably was it the t2 artillery Looks like you also snipe the TMD with the with the uh, with the Gunther and got some TMLs in. I see more dead dead Maxes. Strap armor goes down, kills your artillery. But I mean, look at this: two thousand six hundred and fifty reclaim here. Yes, you lost one. Uh, one Gunther for that. That is totally fine. Just make sure you get the strat wreck. And it looks like these guys will, will grab it. So that's really nice. You can see you're way ahead on reclaim. Compared to the rest of the field. Main problem though is that you still only have 4 PDs. I mean this is never enough. Right? In this scenario you've really neglected your PDs. They are the main... Uh, they're the main tool that defend this position. The the Gunthers, 
right? The TML is there to snipe things that are far away, and so is the T2 artillery. The T2 artillery is there is protected by the units, and it's protected by the T2PDs primarily. And then it attacks important targets at a greater distance. So the PDs are the bread and butter. PDs and shields. And your PDs are, well, there's not enough of them. And they're spread out, so they're not all, they're not defended by shields either. So this extremely powerful commander is going to step forward. And we're losing T2 tanks and things, which means... Not only do we lose good units, but uh, he's going to gain more veterancy from those units as well. And right now we're, we're still not building. Attacking with the commander is not, not the right option here. We need to be building. It's the only way to stop the commander is with the PDs. And the reason the PDs are what stop the commander is because they outrange the commander. That's, that's the main deal. They outrange the commander, therefore they can actually stop him. But now it may be... Well, it seems like you're running away. There's a huge amount of dead T2 land. There's going to be a lot of reclaim left. And there's three PDs left over here. That's not going to... That's not going to cut it, basically. Now, you could... You could you actually have a lot of build power over here. So you could uh, continue making PDs. You don't have to fully retreat. You can sort of... Well, you should try and stay out of range of the commander, I guess. But yeah, you definitely could react over here and start building more PDs. And a shield. For sure you could do that. This this is a huge amount of wasted mass, by the way. I mean, I can't emphasize enough how much wasted mass there was from not ringing that PD or that, uh, that mechs. But yeah, at this point, the whole front is going to die, which means all the PDs, which is a lot of mass. The Gunters, which is a lot of mass. The TML, which is the MVP of the game so far. 8,600 mass kills. That's insane. Also, yes, yeah, so you've retreated, and uh, air looks to be lost as well. So, yeah, this is, this is a very, very bad turn of events. And really, it's just a lack of T2PDs. You didn't continue building enough. At the front line. Like, this is... It's a very it's a very difficult thing to hold such a forward position. So, you can't really afford to just... Stand around. As you're standing around not building stuff, he's all the time building Ilshavo. He's all the time... Increasing his power... And getting ready to push you back. Because that's what he has to do. He has to push you back eventually. So you, you need a lot of PDs. So now you're in the water. And you're upgrading to T3. I don't really think... That's great. The reason I don't think it's great is if you just look at how long it takes to make t3 with no assistance three minutes and 20 seconds i mean he could conceivably run over your whole base by that point if he just walks forward and if he has enough phobos he has a decent little group of ilshis as well and of course the super powerful commander so it's a very slow upgrade with no assistance is uh, t3 on the commander so also, you're in a position where you don't have stealth and you're very close to the surface. So you could be ground fired and you could easily be torped because air is lost. So this is not a good decision here. You should try and you should have escaped this way towards your base. All right, here's the we have bricks now, which is nice. That's very nice. In fact, we also lost trebs, by the way, which are not cheap. Like what, seven, eight hundred mass? Yeah, eight hundred mass. So that's very painful. And T2 Max is at the front. Now we do have our teammate comes over, which is very, very welcome. But he does not really have a big enough army, and he also has much less veterancy. So we have to be. This is a case where micro becomes really important, because you have to stay right at the edge of the range of your bricks here. 
basically if you get too close he's gonna overcharge your bricks and you lose everything you have to s keep the ACU right in this range now <laughs> but for all this time you've basically not been not been using the bricks they've just been standing here maybe you've already given up at this point or I actually I'm not sure what you were doing to be honest I don't know what else is happening on the map that you could be looking at probably you're fixing your power situation actually which is certainly dire Because, yeah, now without power, because, yeah, okay, you're still on 880 power. You basically haven't built a P-Gen in, like, 15 minutes. Clearly a, a major mistake. This is one of the problems with team games. You get used to, uh, you get used to teammate overflow. And then suddenly it disappears, and now you're actually, like, you know, down 2,000 power. That was insane, you know. Obviously something that you don't want to see happen and that distracts you from using your bricks and then you can't uh, well you managed to defend I don't think this guy needed to stop here like if you look at look at his stuff he has 21 Ilshis that's a lot of Ilshis still has full HP he did not need to stop here he could walk into your base for sure so you really got away with with that to be honest he he made a um, large mistake by he's making a large mistake as we speak basically by standing here you should walk forward looks like your air player is dying to air at his forward fire base resties there it goes your t3 is almost finished bricks survive an encounter with the ACU and certainly one stealth bot would be a huge help another force multiplier we call it nicely done taking out the strat with the anti-air it's very nice to have one of those and uh, this is a this is this is really major though this has to has to be fixed no storages on t3 max Look at all of these. This is this is so inefficient. Uh, I mean, you shouldn't be building anything else right now except storages around T3 Maxes. Building this mass storage is like one mass storage gives you plus like less than one mass. Four mass storages around this give you plus nine mass so they give you more than two mass each each uh, each storage around a t3 max gives you more than two mass gives you 2.25 mass right so this is this doesn't even come close and the, the the I don't really want to try and calculate the amount of wasted mass in this on this max. <laughs> it's a lot though. It's a huge amount. So that's a that's a huge huge mistake as well. Also going straight for a T three P gen after one T two P gen. This late in the game, not gonna work either. Not ever. It's not ever really gonna work to make a T three P gen with one T two, except with lots of overflow. AKA it it doesn't really work, you know. <laughs> okay, you're making lots of gestures. I would not advise that to be honest. Because as you can see, I mean one flak and all the gestures will die. Also there's T3 air and you don't have air control. So this is gonna be one thousand mass wasted and yeah it's all gone now. You'd be better off with some mantis to defend over there. Looks like our teammate has been found, and he's gonna die to all the Ilshis. I told you this is a lot of Ilshis, and they really took out that commander with great ease. And also a lot of other stuff as well. And that's game over, basically. Actually, the air player will die because the shields and stuff were from the your other teammate there goes the air player 
at the front. Your air player, you know, actually helped a huge amount with the artillery at the front. So, um, you know, the air player didn't do... He had some T3 Maxes, you know. Wow, he had T2 lands as well. Um, yeah, I guess the main issues in this game were your team never got either of the islands. I mean, this guy has a T3 Max on the island. You should also keep your eyes open for, you know, attacking the other side of the map as well with a drop. So, uh... Yeah, also the teacher ACU. Going for the spider bot. You got further than I thought you would on that, actually. But yeah, not really a great option if you look at how long it would take. Yeah, I mean, four minutes, I guess it's not that long. But, um... Well, it's fine, I guess. That's kind of... You're just going for a Hail Mary there. Why not, I guess, but, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, there's a lot of things I said in there. Hopefully, you can get something out of it. Um, now, you did think this was, you did say double nano. This is actually just a single nano, but he had T2 as well, and he was getting veterancy, so. Yeah, double nano, you don't want to mess with. <laughs> single nano. Definitely just, uh, you know, a lot of PDs, as in, you know, you had maybe four there. If you had eight PDs, you keep that guy at bay for sure, I would say. And you definitely ha could afford to make them. Main thing, maybe, maybe the main thing. You got to have storages around these, these T3 Maxes. Don't, don't make them if you're not going to build storages. <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, that was quite a quite a nice game. I think he played well, uh, but still plenty of room for improvement at the same time. So thanks for sending me. Thanks for becoming a patron. If anyone else would like to support me and get uh, replay reviews or even one-to-one -one lessons, where we uh, you know really give you in-depth info on your gameplay then subscribe on my patreon and i will see you soon have a good one everyone